And whenever you're ready. It's okay. So hey everyone, I'm Sanjana and I'm going to be talking about having better residency aid in the U.S. Navy. So first off, the Joint Base in San Antonio, the premier installation in the Department of Defense, defines resilience as the ability to withstand, adapt, recover, and or grow in the face of challenges and demands. Now given this, let's look at what we already have in place for residency aid in the Navy and more importantly, what is wrong with it. So aid in the Navy can be categorized into handouts, programs, and presentations. Handouts and presentations go pretty hand in hand. They're more for, they're more for superficial and super um, service level uh, exposure to education and awareness on resilience and improving stress. But programs are a little bit different. Um, the Comprehensive Soldier Fitness Program is actually a program for the Army, but it's um, directly related to the Navy Mental Health, Wellbeing, and Resilience Action Plan and its goal, which is to train to maximize potential and enhance resilience and, um, and enable soldiers to thrive in today's Army, which is directly rela related to the Navy Resilience Plan because it incorporates well-being, mental health, and resilience into Navy capability. And I also included these two quotes on the sides because um, actually the first one is from the stimulus material from The Dark Side of Resilience by Harvard Business Review. And it just um, depicts a common US Marine Corps mantra, which is pain is just weakness leaving the body. And the following quote is from Jocko Willink, a retired Navy SEAL, and he says, all your excuses are lies. So looking at all this information and these initiatives, I was able to derive um, two main points. The first one being that um, these initiatives are obviously based around resilience. And the second one being that they are more focused on Navy capacity and, ca and capability rather than the actual well-being well of Navy personnel. So they teach emotional strength, but it actually correlates to stoicism and, and instability of emotions. And stoicism is actually the um, absence of emotion and the lack of emotion. And they teach how to survive in the Navy, but they neglect to teach their soldiers um, skills that will apply to their lives after the Navy and it affects them. And they also try to reduce risk and, and, and um, incorporate more focus, but evidently it's not possible by um, the U.S. Naval Institute, which actually mentioned that there were multiple incidents in the 7th Fleet with the USS John S. McCain and the USS Fitzgerald that were due to lack of resilience and recovery because of the Navy's perceptions that they have to be at their top performance always. And this puts people that the Navy is protecting at risk because um, these incidents are capable of happening. And not only are we putting people, the public, into risk, but we're also putting our own Navy into risk, but at the danger of themselves. Um, in 2012 itself, the suicides in active duty, active duty Navy personnel was at 58, and five years later, in 2017, that number increased to 65, and another five years later, 2022, last year, this number increased to 70. And that just goes to show that these resili resilience programs are not doing enough to provide our Navy personnel with enough um, emotional strength and resilience and recovery to not go to suicide as a coping, coping mechanism. So given all of this, what do we do next? How do we enhance our current resilience aid in the Navy? That's where my plan comes in. It's called the Neo Navy Plan, Neo meaning new. And this plan is definitely going to have more of an emphasis on the actual well-being and welfare of our Navy personnel rather than their capacity and performance in the Navy. So um, the first part of it is group therapy and counseling. Handouts and presentations can really only do so much. They provide surface level information, but group therapy and counseling and having allocated time to talk to group members and um, talk to people who are having the same conflicts as you and most likely experiencing the same emotions and feelings will allow Navy personnel to feel heard and understood. Um, furthermore, I include an, an emphasis on personal care because um, the American Psychological Association says that positive lifestyle factors like ample sleep um, strengthen the body to adapt to stress and reduce the toll of emotions like anxiety and depression. So by taking care of their physiological needs, we're also enabling them to have greater resilience. Um, finally, Finally, I have mindfulness practices like meditation or journaling, and I know it's not a common thing for a Navy personnel to be writing a journal, but there are still people and it still can help them, and it can actually help them build connections and hope, and it can prime them to deal with stressful situations that require resilience. 
There are limitations to this solution, of course. Um, there are some sailors and naval officers that may just not want the NNP or the Neo Navy plan. Um, this is because they may feel that it, it may take away time from maintaining standard training and active duty time um, with, uh, with allocating time to group therapy and mindfulness. And so that may be an issue that we have to overcome. Uh, furthermore, implementing and integrating a new system um, into a system that's already been in place for so long and that already um, seems to have such support but really is lacking may be um, an issue as well because, um, especially for older veterans that have already been in the Navy for so long. And also changes in conflict status can occur, uh, meaning like um, some Navy personnel will have lighter workloads, they may not be in so much conflict, and then it can escalate to, to situations where they may not even get enough sleep. So having um, time to allocate to the feasibility of this plan may also be an issue as well. Um, furthermore, there are implications to the solution that include lower suicide rate, less mishaps, and for sailors to be more in touch with their emotions. Um, lower suicide rate because we provide our Navy, our Navy personnel with more resilience and um, better ways to cope with their stress by encouraging them to actually face their emotions instead of um, encouraging stoicism, which is like abandoning, abandoning their emotions. So um, we're providing them with better coping, coping mechanisms than uh, suicide and less mishaps because as we saw with the 7th Fleet, that was caused because there was no focus because um, the soldiers were not allowed enough recovery and they had the resilience. So by taking care of the resilience through this plan, uh, we can also encourage less mishaps and incidents. Um, furthermore, they'll be more in touch with their emotions, of course, because we're um, straying away from the whole topic of stoicism. And in doing that, we're also teaching them true resilience because um, resilience right now in the Navy is don't you have a stressful situation and you just don't react to it. But really, it should be that you react to it, you understand and acknowledge that you have um, certain emotions to it, and then you overcome those emotions. And that is what resilience actually means. Um, the, they'll of course have more support because current strategies are more so aimed to um, their performance in the Navy, so there's a little bias there, and um, my plan would actually ensure that their well-being and welfare is taken care of. And then of course, um, they will be taught essential traits for their post-Navy life because we're not just aiming for them to do well in the Navy, we're aiming for them to be able to have the right strategies, the right coping mechanisms, and the right sense of resilience to um, overcome their stressful situations, and then also come out of the Navy and be able to cope with any trauma, et cetera, that they may have endured during their time. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we have two questions for you. How did you handle the differing perspectives in order to reach a conclusion. Okay, so um, my different perspectives, obviously there's like a very um, like military, navy sort of perspective with this topic, but then also combine that with a cultural and more um, scientific, more like free form topic of resilience that has very subjective opinions. Um, that was like kind of combining that was a challenge that I had to overcome um, because there's one perspective of like, okay, resilience can require you being in touch with your emotions and having mindfulness and uh, meditating and taking care of yourself, whereas the Navy is more um, very influenced in um, like being tough and like hard and just not being in touch with emotions as it may seem. So like, taking the risk to um, combine both areas was something that I had to consider. Okay, and then lastly, what additional questions emerge from your research? Why are these questions important? So additional questions that emerged from my research was actually like, um, cons I was considering why these things have not been put into place at all. Um, there is evidence that stoicism may be helpful for the Army, but uh, for the Navy, but uh, long term, these things are not going to be helpful. So I was wondering why there hasn't been um, anything um, that's already been put into place to acknowledge your emotions. And I think it's more so because of how um, the Navy is already stigmatized to be very tough and very um, powerful people. So they're trying to like, keep that um, that mindset for their men because they don't want to, they, they don't want them to be overcome by their emotions on the field. But I think that with the solution, you'll be able to do that and like welcome your emotions while also being able to um, gain more resilience by dealing with them instead of pushing them away. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. 
slowly if you want to get situated.